Welcome back to another video. Hope you are having a great day. And today I'm not really sure if I've got the Asus VivoBook S15 2024 with the latest CPU Snapdragon X Elite or if we have the Snapdragon X Elite on the Asus VivoBook S15. Either way, it is a Copilot Plus PC and we are going to check out how it behaves. So let's go straight for it and if you are watching this video on your windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official oim keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get even cheaper and besides windows 11 pro if you are looking for windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our microsoft account you can use the same coupon code which will give you the best price possible at this moment so just in case the link will be down below so the snapdragon x elite cpu as i mentioned on the intro is part of the lineup of new cpus arm cpus like apple is doing to achieve great performance with great efficiency so we will have a lot of battery 18 hours according to asus but we are going to test that out with great efficiency which a spoiler it is but not everything is just sunshine and rainbows there are a lot of advantages but there are also some disadvantages so the video today is not only about the vivabook s15 it's also about some of the cautions that we should have when purchasing this computer and also some of the great things of having a snapdragon x elite but before we dive in let's take a look at the asus vivabook s15 2024 which has this awesome display 15.6 oled hdr display with a 3k resolution and 120 hertz refresh rate it is a bright screen with 600 nits vivid colors and it maintains color accuracy even at extreme viewing angles that we never use actually the only thing that we should be cautious about is on these bright displays or glossy display to be more precise if we have lightning on the office for example we just need to avoid those angles when we have a normal angle without direct light on it just a awesome experience it is really lightweight 1.47 millimeters thickness and one kilo 430 grams if i'm not mistaken link will be down below for all the specifications but it's really lightweight not because it's built of any cheap plastic or whatsoever actually it's full metallic body so no plastics whatsoever actually the keys are plastic but everything else is metallic it has this really nice backlit keyboard and this nicely sized trackpad with about 12.5 centimeters by 8.5 centimeters now this is not the best trackpad that i've tested it's awesome it's great but it's not the best if you want to check out the best trackpad that i've seen so far in a computer subscribe to the channel in case you haven't done already and just wait a few days surprise surprise it is an asus machine but it's not this one now on the right side we will find two usb type a 3.2 generation one ports and on the left side one hdmi 2.1 two usb type c4 thunderbolt ports one micro sd and a audio jack inside we will find the cpu snapdragon x elite xe178 100 we will get back to that in just a moment it has 12 cores up to 3.4 gigahertz and it has a npu with 45 tops which makes it a co-pilot certified pc it has integrated graphics 16 gigabytes of ram and one terabyte of ssd and in a very simplistic way in terms of the snapdragon lineup there are two families the snapdragon x elite and the snapdragon x plus now the x plus are the more basic ones and the x elite are the more advanced what we have right over here is a snapdragon x elite but inside these two families we find four different levels of cpus with different levels of performance now on the snapdragon x elite which is the one that we are using right over here we have the snapdragon x elite x1e 78100 so this is the lowest one on the x elite family 
But if this is the lowest one, I'm really curious to see the results of the top one. Because if we take a look at some of the numbers that I was able to achieve, on Geekbench we have 2,377 on single core score and 14,035 on multi-core score. We are talking about comparing to a Mac computer. We are talking about MacBook Pro with the M3 chip. And this one has higher performance, which is just awesome. Actually, if you take a look at the screen, 3081 on single core score and 11,577 on multi core score. So the MacBook Pro, for example, or the MacBook Air with the M3 chip has highest performance in single core performance. So if you are browsing the web or any app that uses just one core, it will surpass. But in multi-core score, which is what we use for 3D renders, video editing and audio editing, whatever we do, that takes advantage of all the cores of the computer. Now it is quite a huge difference in terms of performance. Actually comparing with my desktop, which is right over there, a Mac Studio with the M1 Max scores 2480 in single core score and 12600 in multi-core score. So this computer right over here, which costs less than my Mac Studio, has a higher performance. Now on Cinebench, so that you can compare with the other machines, 106 in single core score and 1081 in multi-core score. I also tested in 3D Mark because that's what we do right over here. And on 3D Mark, Time Spy, normal version, we got 1872. So if you ask me, Robert, what does that mean? It just means that it's great in terms of performance on the CPU. On the GPU side, um, if you play games, I would forget about it. I'm not kidding, but I'm exaggerating. I will share with you what we can accomplish and I will share the games that I was able to play. Now, let's take a look on video editing. I did start by using CapCut and using a 4K timeline with 28 minutes video, I was able to scrub the timeline, no issues whatsoever. And if you are wondering about applying effects and so on, you will be able to do all that. I just don't do that for the rendering tests because I like to keep the timeline clean and see how it behaves so I can translate that and help to explain to you. But in terms of final result, in terms of rendering, I was able to render that timeline in 13 minutes. Using another 4K timeline with 13 minutes, I was able to render in six minutes, which is if we are using CapCut, we are expecting to have half of the time rendering. So if I have a 10 minute timeline, 4K, I will be able to render in five minutes or so. One thing that I want to add right over here is while we are using a clean timeline, we can observe the CPU and GPU working if they are maxing out or not, and the CPU was not, which means that if I add effects and transitions and whatnot, the CPU has quite a lot of room to improve and don't expect to have a lot more time on rendering times because we won't, just the CPU will have to work a bit harder. Now, in terms of the Vinci Resolve, we got on the same timeline, 4K 28 minutes, a 16.55 minutes in rendering. Using the same timeline with a 13 minutes 4K video, I was able to render in 8 minutes and 8 seconds, which means that at this moment, CapCut is a bit more optimized than the Vinci Resolve for ARM CPUs. But these results are great if we compare with other machines. But in my opinion, we will see a lot of improvements on the next few months because software like DaVinci Resolve, CapCut and any other software that you might use will be improving and improving like we see or like we have seen on the Apple side. It took quite a while to the apps to be optimized to the ARM CPUs when Apple left Intel to put in their own chips, which I believe that was a great move, by the way. So if these results are great, we will be able to expect on the same hardware even better results. In terms of gaming, I found two difficulties. One I already shared with you, which is the integrated GPU here is not that capable, so don't expect 
a great experience on triple actually don't expect triple a games right over here but the other difficulty has to do what we were talking about the optimization in terms of software which in terms of the gaming area there are a lot of games which are not supported yet on the arm architecture and that was one of the difficulties for example on the xbox app which is one of my favorite apps to install games one of the things that did a here, and it was a bit strange initially did show only the cloud games which is something that usually only has this behavior on mobile devices and here we were not using a mobile device we were using a windows computer but in terms of the hardware it doesn't have compatible games at least for now it's one of the things that i hope that it will change now i went to microsoft store we could find a few games for example forza horizon 5 it wouldn't allow me to install but i did install forza horizon 4 but it was unplayable. It did give me a few errors and that's it. I did install another game that it's very well known, which is Fortnite. It did install, but it wasn't capable of playing. And there are a lot of games that will not be able to be played on this kind of machine. Not only on this particular computer, but any computer with Snapdragon CPU. But there are also a lot of games that are capable and I will leave a link down below so that you can check out a database with a lot of games that that are capable to be played on the ARM CPU and a lot of games that are not able to be played. Now, I did play one which was Overwatch 2 and... Okay, so Overwatch with graphics on lowest settings and also 1920 by 1080, 120 hertz, but uh, we won't need the 120. I'm under Me. Some drop planes where areas where we have more confusion, we do notice drop planes. Quite a few actually. <laughs> so some areas that go. we are clear, and now it did drop to 30, but when we are in areas without so much confusion 60s, 50s, but here for example it does drop below 30s they must not take the objective <laughs> okay so definitely not enough for AAA gaming, not even close, as we were expecting. And I would say, by the way, I'm using the integrated webcam, so what do you feel about doing some gameplay? <laughs> Probably on long demanding games. At this moment, 80 frames per no second, 90 frames per second. So definitely Shimada, on areas where there's no... From? Uh, confusion, oh, not a lot right. of movement, totally of playable, but as soon as we start having a lot of mess on the map, then it will lower Five, to four, three, 30s, 20s two, frames per one. second, so Round two. this is it, Capture definitely not a gaming Achieve game. victory by any means necessary. So we can play Overwatch 2 on the lowest settings, 1080 resolution, and even sometimes the frames per second deep so low that we... Okay, but it's not a concern in my opinion because this is not a gaming computer. Of course, we can play some games, some light games. Yes, we will be able to play on CPUs such as this or GPUs such as this, but not having a lot of compatibility in terms of gaming at this moment doesn't concern me as much as not having compatibility in terms of productivity software. Battery-wise, playing a 4K video on YouTube did drain 2% of 
battery. So doing a really complicated math equation, we can get eight hours and 20 minutes for this kind of usage. So if you want to use your computer just to watch YouTube videos such as this one, you will have eight hours and 20 minutes. If you are going to use it for emails, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, that kind of work, then expect much more. And it will be probably close to the 18 hours that ASUS claim. But if you are going to play Overwatch, then the battery will drain much faster. Now, who's this computer for, in my opinion, of course? For someone that it's looking to have a powerful laptop with a great efficiency. And when I mean powerful laptop, we are talking about top level performance, comparing with MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs with M3. And in this particular case, superior in terms of multi-core performance, as we have seen, but at a lower cost and on the Windows side. Price-wise, it is quite a big difference, especially if we compare with the same configuration, comparing with a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air, same RAM, same SSD, and so on. Nonetheless, there are a few concerns that we should have before jumping in right now. And one is the software compatibility. Now we have seen here CapCut and DaVinci Resolve. I did install quite a few more apps, few games as well. And we have seen that on the gaming area, it is a dangerous area at this moment, but not being a gaming computer, it's not a worry. But I would suggest that if you work with any other software, just do a search online to see if your software is already compatible with ARM CPUs or not. If it is, then this is a great choice in terms of performance and in terms of the efficiency for the battery duration. In terms of build quality, ASUS VivoBook S15 is awesome, a great screen and everything else that we have seen right over here at a much lower price than what we can find on the Apple side of things. And that is just great to see this kind of performance and efficiency on the Windows side of things. That being said, hope that the video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.